I am going to go over a physics problem. This is a problem that I made for my class. I'm going to make. I'm going to go over it so that it's already been due, so that everyone can know how to do it. Okay, so here's here's the problem. Let's look at. I have a picture here to show you the cool things, and we're going to solve this in Python. So a negative three nanocoulomb charge is located at 0 0.2.30 meters. Another charge is at seven of seven nanocoulombs. Nan nanocoulombs is negative 0 0.3.10 meters. What's the value of electric field at 0.1 negative 0 0.20 meters? And then here's another location. So how we're going to do this, I, these are not the right locations, but I just put them here just so you could see. So here's charge Q1, here's charge Q2, and then at some point in space we have an observation location. Uh, there's nothing there, it's just, it's just a point in space. And we want to find the electric field there. So I need to know, I'm going to draw everything. I'm going to make 3D uh, stuff for everything. You don't have to do that. You could just write in the vector values, but I'm going to, uh, actually I might do it both ways. Um, yeah, why not? I'm going to do it both ways. Okay, so I'm going to first do this just as a vector problem, and then I'll do it as a 3D problem. That's what I'll do. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to know the vector location of charge Q1. I'm going to call that RQ1. And then I'm going to need the vector location of vec of the observation location. I'll call that RO. And in order to find the electric field due to charge Q1, I need to know this vector from Q1 to the observation location. So if you look at your basic vector math, if you think about you know a vector is final minus initial, the initial position is RQ1, the final is RO, so R1 would be the difference in those RO final RO minus RQ1. So if I know the vector location of charge 1 and the observation location, I can find the vector R1. With that, I can then find the electric field. So this is from Coulomb's law. This is the uh, electric field due to a point charge. This is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, which is just a constant. Uh, it has a value of 9 times 10 to the ninth. I'm going to call that K, just so I don't have to type out that number. Uh, the magnitude of the charge divided by this distance squared, the magnitude of that vector squared, and then multiplied by the unit vector r1 hat, so that you have to have that r1 hat in order to have this as a vector, right? If I just took this thing out, I did a scalar value, and then I can't add these two vectors, because I need to know the directions of both of them. Now there, there is a trick that I like to use, uh, and that is to say that uh, r1 hat is def any unit vector hat is defined as the vector r divided by the magnitude of that vector. So if I put this in up here, I don't actually have to find the unit vector. I can just say r divided by r1 magnitude squared times another r1. So it would be r1 magnitude cubed. So once I do that, I get a vector value for E1, and then I get a, uh, I do the exact same thing for E2. I'm going to have to find the, the position of charge Q2, uh, the ve uh, vector R2, and I'm going to get that up to E2. And then once I have these two vectors, I add them together, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, so I'm going to do this just, you could do this on paper, right? But I'm going to do it in Python. I'm going to use GlowScript vPython because it has built in vector uh, class, and it makes it super awesome and easy. Especially, I don't want to deal with all those numbers, right? No one wants to deal with all those numbers. Okay, so let's put in our stuff here. I'm going to switch back and forth because I can't remember. I have my, I'm going over here to Trinket. So Trinket.io, if you haven't been there, it's a, and you can't see the whole page just because I'm zoomed in on the part that's important. Uh, it has a bunch of cool stuff there. It's, you can, there's a lot of stuff you can use for free, so you don't even have to have an account. Um, if I go, I'm logged in. I click here and I click New Trinket. I told you I was going to do this in Python, but don't click Python. Uh, that doesn't have the vector class built in. Go down here to GlowScript. GlowScript is Python with the visual module, and I click that. Oh, the ones with the green uh, key next to them uh, are, you can't save unless you have an account. You can write in Python, so you just can't save it. Okay. And then right here, you can do blocks, which is like your Lego Robotics or MIT Scratch, which is super awesome way of programming, but it, it I, I hate it, okay? I cannot do it this way. So go over here to normal Python, and it will load up a window. And then the nice thing here is that we have a coding window and an output window, so we can see both of them. And we can go ahead and save this, and let's say, uh, practice E field. Save it. Okay, the first thing I can do is put in here is my my constant, k. Uh, leave this line alone. 
this is there uh, just to make things work. So just leave that there. K equals 9E9. Nine. That's the Coulomb constant. That's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Don't put the units in because this is a numerical calculation. You are responsible for the units, not the computer. Q1 equals, and I already forgot. I thought it was 2, negative 3 nanocoulombs. Negative 3, and a nanocoulomb is 10 to the negative 9th. And so that's that. Now I'm going to write down, let's call this RQ1. This is the vector location of charge Q1. And it is at 0.2, 0 0.30. So, so here I, I have put this as a vector. If I say vector, that's a built-in function in GlowScript v Python. And if I print out RQ1, it treats it as a vector. loading. It's amazing how uh, impatient you can get. Okay, there's your vector. See? Now I need uh, R, I need Q2. Q2, I think it was negative 7 nanocoulombs. Negative 7 times 10 to the negative 9th. That could be wrong. And I need the location, oh not Q, not W2, Q2. And I need the location. No, it's 7. That one's a negative 3. Did I have that in negative 3? Yeah, that's just 7. And then RQ2 is equal to the vector negative 0 0.3.10. Negative 0 0.3.10. So uh, now I need one other thing. The observation location equals uh, point negative point one negative point two vector negative point one negative point two zero I am ready to rock and roll okay so the first thing I need to do is find that vector r1 r1 is the vector r o minus r q1 just like I said before I don't need to write out the number right I could print this off if I wanted to but I don't have to I don't need to know what that is you know, if you're working this out in paper, you'd need a value for that, but in Python, it doesn't matter. So I don't really care. Now I can find the electric field E, let's call this E1. It's going to be K times Q1 times R1 divided by the magnitude of R1 cubed. So we have a built-in function in Python, GlowScript v Python for magnitude. It's called mag right there. Star star Q3 means raised to the third power. I guess we could print this out if you want. We should print it out to make sure things are working. Check it out. Okay, is that the right answer? Who knows? I mean, I assume it is. I did it. Now we just need to do the same thing for t a charge 2. R2 equals RO minus RQ2. Q and then E2 equals K times Q2 times R2 divided by mag R2 cubed. And then I'm going to say uh, E equals E1 plus E2. And let's print it. And let's make it look nice. E equals E newtons per coulomb. And there's your answer as a vector. If you want to print out the magnitude of that, you can, but I, I asked for the, the electric field. That's the electric field. Now, here's, here's the awesome part. Back over here, what if I change to the observation location of 0, 0 0.4 meters? Well, I go over here, and I go 0, 0 0.4, and I click Run. Since I did this with these variables it doesn't matter if I change one of them I just get an, it just redoes the number it's the same operation right you don't have to redo everything that's barbaric you don't want to be a barbarian well I mean Conan's kind of cool but uh, okay so that's that now let's redo the problem I'm gonna put back to my what was my original location negative point one negative point two let's change it back there negative it's funny how you forget things like that negative point one not no point one negative point two zero okay now what I want to do is to uh, make this a three-dimensional thing so let's just 
go down here and I'm going to start off with uh, making this an object. So let's say uh, Q1, check I get rid of these things, uh, I will, Q1 equals sphere, position equals, uh, let's just copy this thing, I'm going to get rid of these. Uh, radius and it does need to have a, a size and let's say if I go 0.2 meters away if I make it a centimeter big uh, radius that might work I can give it a color color equals color dot yellow I just picked that I don't even know why uh, I can even do this Q equals this why did I copy that I mean I can type negative 3 times 10 to the negative 9 now I'm going to delete this stuff right there now I'm going to run it. And there's my charge. And you can see this is a three-dimensional space. I can rotate around and zoom in and out. And there it is. And watch this. I mean, I can print out. Print q1.pos. Oops, not there. Print q1.q. So I've associated the charge q with that object. So q1.q is charge q1's charge. Does that make sense? There it is down there, and there's the position. So I don't need to do r1, r2, and all that. q1.pos is the vector location of that charge. Yes, that is awesome. OK, let's do the same thing down here. q2 equals sphere position equals vector negative point. I think I can type faster than I can copy and paste. Uh, same radius. You don't have to. Uh, let's make this cyan. Color equals color dot cyan. Um, I find that with a black background, the lighter color objects look better. And then Q equals 7E negative 9. And let's delete this stuff. And then run it. Okay, so there you go. There's my two charges. They look a little big. Let's make these half as half the size, 0, 5. Actually, that's 10 centimeters. That's why. That's not a centimeter. Let's make that even, let's make that 0. 0.3. Oops, 0. 0.03. Now run it. There, okay, I'm happy. Okay, now let's make one more object. Let's call that the observation location. Let's actually make it as an object. R O, uh, let's call it OBS for observation equals a sphere. Position equals vector negative 0.1, negative 0.2, 0, and radius. Let's make it smaller because it's not actually a thing. 0, 1. And let's leave it as white. And then uh, I can delete that. Gosh, it's slow. There. And then, you know, this is 3D, right? Rotate around. I mean, that's just awesome. Okay, so let's go over here and let's just, I'm going to delete this stuff. Let's just start over. So now I'm going to say uh, E1 is electric field due to charge 1. And, and um, I'm going to do it all in one. I can, well, let's do it like this. R1 equals, uh, it's going to be the observation location, which is observation.pos minus q1.pos. Right, so because I don't have to do R1 and R2 and all that stuff, it, I'm using the name of the object and its vector location of the object as my position. And then let's just go ahead and do R2 equals OBS.POS minus Q2.POS. Uh, and now I can rock and roll. E1 equals K times uh, Q1.Q times R1 divided by mag R1 cubed. E2 equals k times q2 dot q times r2 divided by mag r2 cubed. And this is a uh, e equals e1 plus e2 print e. Let's just make sure we get the same thing. And I'm not going to be done just letting you know. 
Okay, that I think that I'm pretty sure that's the same value for the electric field we got right there, so that's good. And I don't have to print these out. Okay, now let's make an arrow. Let's make three arrows. An arrow at the observation location equal to the vector fields, because it will be fun. So I'm going to call uh, this e arrow one is a type of object called an arrow where and the arrow has two big pro uh, properties property number one is the position is the location of the beginning of the arrow and then axis is a vector from the beginning of the arrow to the end of the arrow so i want to have this at pos equals obs.pos i want it to start at the observation location and the axis i could say is equal to e1 and and leave it let's see object one was yellow so let's make this yellow And let's run it. And yes, I did make a mistake on purpose. And there you go. Check that out. Where are my charges? They're gone. They're gone because this is like a 300 meter long thing. I've used the value of the electric field as a distance scale. And so that's actually way too big, right? Because it's plugging the value of the electric field as a distance. So what I need to do is add in here a scale. So let's add in a scale. So let's call this E scale equals, let's see if it's 300 and I want, only want it to be, let's say, um, five centimeters or so. Let's say 10 to the negative fourth. Let's just try that. There's other ways to do this. Uh, and then down here, I can multiply E scale times E1 and then it will it will scale it down. And if, it, if it's the right size, that's good. If not, we can make it, we can change it. Oh, that's too small. Or did it give me an error? E scale. It can't be that small. Oh, yeah, I guess that's 10 to the negative 2. Okay, yeah, so that's good. So let's, let's do 10 to the negative. Let's do 2 times 10 to the negative 3. Mm, yeah, I'm good with that. And you'll notice that this is a negative charge. The electric field is pointing towards that one. Now let's do the same thing for uh, the other charge e arrow 2 is the same thing arrow position equals obs.pos axis equals let's use the same scale e scale times e2 and make it cyan and oh that one's big Okay, so yeah, that one's way bigger because it's a lot closer and it's a bigger charge. It was a poor choice of values, my fault. Uh, let's make this scale uh, smaller. What if it's just by a half? Is that gonna be small enough? Because now I want to still be able to see that other charge. Eh, okay, that's good. It's just not perfect, that's fine. And then let's find the total magnitude E arrow is gonna be equal to arrow position equals obs.pos axis equals e scale times e and let's leave it as as white and it should be the vector sum of those two okay and there you go that's it let's just do this let's change q2.q from negative from seven to uh two just for fun just to make it look a little bit cooler and then i need to make that scale bigger Oh no, I think that's pretty good. So there you go. So there's the electric field due to charge Q2. There's E, the charge due to Q1. And this is the total electric field. The end. If I want to move the observation location, I could do that. I'm not going to do that because I think it's okay. Uh, and I'm going to save this. And I'm going to give you the code down below. I hope you enjoyed this. I had fun. I'll talk to you guys later.